Hello my Hello Maniacs out there! Welcome back to the channel, it's so great to see you again. So I've now done tier lists for Disney feature animated films. I've also done them for the Pixar films. I've even done it for the Pixar shorts. But now, one of the most requested ones that I've gotten is DreamWorks movies. And boy, there are more of these than I realized there were. From How to Train Your Dragon to Kung Fu Panda to Shrek to Prince of Egypt, these films have captivated us and also left us scratching our heads because some of them are just plain weird. But now we will dive into them and do the official ranking of which DreamWorks films are the best. I'm totally kidding. This is a completely subjective list about my opinions of them, which you will most likely differ on. So I'm making this disclaimer now. I will probably disagree with you on a lot of things, and you know what? That is okay. Well, after the Disney one, I have so many people say that they actually like Chicken Little and think I'm going to hate them, which I don't. You're allowed to like Chicken Little. Just because I hate it doesn't mean you have to. Enjoy it! And also, if you guys could please like, comment, and share this video with your friends, that would really help out the channel greatly. And also in the comments, let me know what tier list you want to see next. And also, you can come watch me on Twitch at Brian Hull's Voice, and we do a lot of fun stuff on there. Right now, we're playing through Skyward Sword, but we're hopefully going to finish that up soon and doing some Minecraft and then some Pokemon later, so hope to see y'all there. Okay, so let's get this tier list going! So of course, as I do with all of my tier lists, we are going in chronological order of when they came out, because I'm a nerd and I just prefer it that way. So we'll start with their first movie, Ants! So Ants, I had not watched since it came out. And I went back and rewatched it just to see what my feelings still were. I did that for a lot of these, which you'll find out as we keep going. And with this one, my opinion may have gotten worse. I am not a fan of Ants. I do not think this is a well-made movie. The main character gets on my last nerve. I do not like Woody Allen's voice, especially with this character. It just doesn't work. I don't want to watch this again. I was not a fan. We're going to put you in F. I did not like Ants. Okay, Ants goes in F. DreamWorks is already starting off on a bad note. Like, we start starting, boom, first one goes in F. Next one is Prince of Egypt. Now, considering you started with Ants, Prince of Egypt was a massive step in the right direction. Prince of Egypt is phenomenal. And you're going to go right up there. So, Prince of Egypt was just phenomenal. The music is incredible. Hans Zimmer just, oh, just, oh, is amazing. I sing these songs all the time. So good. I love the story. I love the characters. I love the fact that you did a story involving biblical characters and they feel like real characters and not like caricatures of what you think people are. So if you guys grew up in church, you know what I'm talking about. Like you'd watch all these really terrible movies try and teach kids about Bible stories and all of them were just terrible. Except for Veggie Tales, they were good. But everything else you just dreaded when they put it on. It's like, no, don't do it. Just give us Veggie Tales. So yeah, Prince of Egypt is incredible. El Dorado, another one that I didn't watch after it came out. Like, I watched it when it first came out, and I remember thinking, eh, it's not really my thing. So I went back and rewatched it, and y'all, I don't know what was wrong with Past Brian, but I really liked this one. It was really fun. Um, definitely not as good as Prince of Egypt. Miles better than Ants, so I'm, I'm probably gonna put it in A. I really liked it. Way to go, El Dorado. Chicken Run, so this is the first of the collaborations with Ardman. If y'all don't know Ardman, just look at the face. The face says it all. Everybody knows that face because it's, it's the Ardman face. So they did like Wallace and Gromit and Flushed Away, which we'll get to later in this one. And then also did like Early Man. And they've done a few more. I just can't think of them off the top of my head. So if you like British humor, then like Ardman is stuff for you. And normally I really like British humor. So I, I, I thoroughly enjoy my Ardman. And with Chicken Run, Chicken Run is not my favorite from Ardman, but it's not bad by any means. I'm going to put it in B. It's pretty good. So you go into B. It's pretty good. Okay, so I did include two direct two video films that DreamWorks made. They've only made two. So I figured this was the only way we were going to talk about these films. So this is Joseph, King of Dreams. Most people have no idea that this is a thing. And um, I, I understand why. <laughs> So Joseph King of Dreams was a direct to video feature that has the art style of Prince of Egypt. And I, I think they were really trying to bank out that thinking, hey, Prince of Egypt was a big hit. Let's make this direct to video and see what happens. Because this was during Disney's direct to video feature craziness. And um, I finally sat down and watched this thing. And do you guys remember how I was talking about before that I grew up in church and you'd watch these really terrible animated movies talking about the Bible? and it made you want to beat your head against the wall? 
this is that. This is that, but with a slightly better budget, because the animation is better than those terrible ones that churches made. But it's still really, really bad. Oh, it's... Oh, no. No. The songs were terrible. The animation was terrible. The, the characters in there were exactly what I was talking about before, where they don't feel like real people. They didn't feel like real people. Joseph started to feel real, like near the end of it, but not enough to save the movie for me. I just sat there going, make it end. Make it end. I was getting so many bad flashbacks from Sunday Skull. No, make it stop. Never watching that again. So now we come to the big one. The big kahuna. Shrek. The Sh Shrek like put DreamWorks on the map. It was like one of the biggest things that ever happened. I do love Shrek. Granted, it was one of those when I first saw it. I thought it was fine, but the more I've watched it, the more I just see how clever it was and how good it was. And my appreciation for it has just gone on and up and up and up. So you're definitely going in A tier. I'm not putting you in S tier, but I'm putting you in like really, really, really high A tier. Like it's probably going to be top of A tier or close to it. Fear it. When I saw the trailer for this, I thought it looked stupid and I wanted nothing to do with it. And I didn't watch it for years. And then I finally watched it. And y'all, this thing is phenomenal. It is gorgeous. I love it. There is just something about most of the hand-drawn stuff from DreamWorks that their animation is just spectacular. James Baxter and his work on spirit and just horses in general is it that's a masterclass in and of itself. This is a masterclass of animation. It's just beautiful. And on top of that, I just love the story. I love movies from the animal's perspective where the animal doesn't talk. I know there's technically that narration with Mark Wahlberg but it doesn't happen that often. And honestly, I'd like it more if that wasn't there. The music from Hans Zimmer is just phenomenal. The animation is stunning. I can't say enough good stuff about Spirit. This is one of my favorites from them. I watch it all the time. It is so good. Okay, I don't watch it that often, but I want to watch it more because it's so good. I love Spirit. And yes, I put Spirit above Shrek and I do it again. So we come to the last of the hand-drawn animated films, and Sinbad, Sinbad was a huge flop. It was a terrible flop. It did so bad for the company, like, it almost put them under. It was bad. Oh, I remember seeing the trailer for this, thinking how bad it looked, and thinking, oh, this is gonna be horrible, and I finally saw it, and I thought it was just terrible. It was horrible, and I wanted nothing to do with it. But now I watched it almost 20 years later, and I gotta say, much like El Dorado, I weirdly love this movie. Because I'm sitting there going, I should hate some of these characters. There's a lot of stuff going on in this movie I should hate. Y'all are doing so many things that I hate, but the way y'all are doing it, I don't hate it. In fact, I kind of like it. Why do I like you as much as I do? Because, like, Sinbad himself drives me nuts. Like, if I, those kind of people in real life where it's like, oh, the rules don't apply to me, I do whatever I want. <laughs> I only care about myself. That drives me nuts. But the way Brad Pitt plays him, he's so charismatic. I can't help but like him. And the animation, once again, is okay. Well, half the animation is phenomenal. Let me be real here. Everything hand-drawn, oh, is just stellar. I could watch it all day. But yeah, no, they really tried to incorporate some CG in this. It did not work like at all. The CG is really bad. I mean, the CG animation in and of itself is fine, but the way it rendered into the scene was horrible. I remember even looking bad when it first came out. They really needed to work on that some more. I really like Sinbad. I really like Sinbad. I actually think I like it more than El Dorado, which is so weird because before I rewatched it like a few days ago, he was at the bottom of my list or one of the worst ones. And now it's an A tier! Maybe I just miss hand-drawn animation that bad, but I was watching El Dorado and Sinbad just like, why did I hate these? These are great! Ooh, and now we come to Shrek 2. Now, I know a lot of people adore Shrek 1 and think that all the other sequels are inferior, but I think Shrek 2 is way better than Shrek 1! Um, where do I want to put Shrek 2? I, 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 I'd put Shrek 2 above Spirit, but not above Prince of Egypt. Shrek 2 is phenomenal. I think it is vastly funnier. I think the music is more fun. I think the characters shine better. I think it's more clever. I think everything about Shrek 2 just fires on all cylinders. It's one of my favorite comedies, period. It's just so good. Oh boy, Shark Tale. I'm so excited to talk about Shark Tale. So Shark Tale 
Yeah, no, Chartel's going down here. It's in high F. I mean, granted, I like it more than Ants or Joseph King of Dreams, but that's not saying much. Wow, this, this list is so divided. Especially early DreamWorks, it's either I really love it or I really hate it. There's like, there's not much in the middle here. And yeah, now that we get to this era of DreamWorks, this is gonna fill out a lot more. So here we come to Madagascar. I think Madagascar one is fun. It's fun, I, I, it's cute. I enjoyed it. There's not really much I don't like about it. It's just, I like the characters. I like the premise. I thought it was fun. And King Julian is awesome. So actually, no, I like you more than Chicken Run. You're gonna go in high B. All right, so now we come to Wallace and Gromit, the curse of the were-rabbit. I'm just crackers about Jays. So if you guys grew up in the UK, you guys know who Wallace and Gromit are. Apparently they're really huge characters over there. This was my first introduction to them. And after this, I, I enjoyed them a lot. So I went and watched like a, a lot of the original shorts and whatnot that Ardman put on with these two characters. And they were a lot of fun. But I like the original shorts more than I like this movie. But it's still good. It's still good. I liked it more than Chicken Run but not more than Madagascar. So you're gonna go snug right there in B. And now we have Over the Hedge. Over the Hedge I've always thought was fine. It never really did enough to really grab my attention that much, but it held it enough that I could finish the movie. So you're going in C. <laughs> and one, one more thing I wanna note, in all these movies lately where they have a character that moves really, really fast and like totally messes with everybody, like and it's like time stand still, everyone calls it the Quicksilver moment. Even though it's not my favorite movie, I gotta give credit where credit is due. That Quicksilver scene everyone's talking about happened in 2014. Over the Hedge was out in I think 2006. And Hammy did it first. So hashtag justice for Hammy. It is not the Quicksilver, it is the Hammy. And y'all know this, that's the first time I saw it. And that was the one thing that kept Over the Hedge from being in the D tier, is that moment with Hammy. I remember the first time I saw that, I thought it was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. Cause I'd never seen anything like that. That was before the Quicksilver scenes and all that. And I remember laughing my butt off at that. But that was like the only thing I did. Everything else was just kind of fine. Flushed Away, another Ardman film. And I think this is the last one of the Ardman films. And yeah, I did thoroughly enjoy Flushed Away. I enjoyed it more than Chicken Run, but not as much as Wallace and Gromit and Curse of the Were-Rabbit. So like all the Ardman, all the Ardman films are just going right there. So Shrek the Third. I enjoyed Shrek 1. Love Shrek 2. Shrek the Third is there. <laughs> I don't think I'm alone in saying this, but this took a major downgrade. And there are a few things that keep it from F for me. Like, it's still the same characters that I love. Granted, they're not in their best performances. And I do like some of the jokes that they do with some of the princesses. So I'll let a lot of that slide. I do really like that campfire scene with Shrek and Arthur. Those are like the only things keeping it out of F. Otherwise, it might end up there. Basically, my D tier is like I'm indifferent towards it. So I've had some people ask my rating. S is I just adore the crud out of it. A is I think you're really good. B is now you're pretty good. C is, you're okay. D is, I'm indifferent towards your existence. And then F is, I don't like you, go away. I should have explained this in my other videos. All right, and now we have B movie. B movie is weird. There are parts that I like and other parts, like they start a whole idea and they don't finish it to the end and it just kind of falls off the face of the earth. And I don't understand why this movie was made. I don't understand the point of it. I don't get it but I don't hate it. I'm gonna put you, I like you more than Shrek the Third, but I can't put you any higher. It's a movie that exists. Kung Fu Panda, y'all. Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu Panda deserves all the love because Kung Fu Panda is amazing and I love it. And you're going up there. Actually, I don't, you might go in front of Spirit. I, I do. Yeah, I like it more than Shrek 2. Kung Fu Panda is awesome. So we have another S tier. Because Kung Fu Panda is just, oh, it's so good. So now we come to Madagascar, Escape to Africa, and weirdly enough, I like it better than the first one. I thought it was really well done. I don't know about the, I, maybe just because we're in Africa now and I'm a sucker for Africa, but there was something about this movie. I just thought it was funnier. I just thought the characters had more to do and it was just more fun. And yeah, I, I liked Madagascar, Escape to Africa more than Madagascar 1. I'd say top of B. I'm gonna put it top of B. All right, Monsters vs. Aliens. Another one of those when it first came out, I thought it was kinda eh, okay. And then I watched, I haven't watched it since it came out and I watched it again and my opinion remains the same. Uh, you're gonna go over here with Over the Hedge for being okay. Overall, just didn't really work for me. 
It's like there were a couple of good isolated jokes, but then they like tried to make this whole thing with missing Link, like trying to like they try to give him like this arc that they abandon right after they start kind of like a B movie in that way but they did less of those so I, it's only like one or two here as opposed to like five and so yeah it's it's okay it's a film that exists that I like slightly more than the indifferent ones so yeah you're okay how to train your dragon beautiful film absolutely fantastic oh it's so good and as much as i love you prince of egypt you are an incredible movie i have to say i like how to train your dragon more it was just so good oh i loved how to train your dragon so much now we have shrek forever after the fourth and final installment until illumination reboots shrek um, I liked it more than Shrek the Third, that's for sure. And I am glad that it ended on this note and not Shrek the Third. Um, I wouldn't say I liked it as much as Shrek 1 or Shrek 2. I would say I liked it better than Madagascar 1, but not better than Madagascar 2. But you're gonna go right in there, Shrek Forever After. That that feels good. Mega Mind, it, it was way better than had any right to be. It was so much fun, so much good stuff was in there. And so I like you quite a bit. Not as much as Shrek, but you're gonna go above Sinbad and El Dorado over, over an A-tier Megamind. You enjoy that. Oh, I feel like this era of DreamWorks is just some of my favorite stuff. It's just so good. <laughs> and now we come to Kung Fu Panda 2, which I liked even more than the first one. I'm excited about these. I love these movies. <laughs> uh, but do I love Kung Fu Panda 2 more than Prince of Egypt? No. So you're gonna go there. You go right above your predecessor. But oh, it's so good. I love Kung Fu Panda. All right. So now we come to Puss in Boots, the first spinoff into the Shrek universe. I liked Puss in Boots more than most people, but I wouldn't say that I liked it more than Shrek or Shrek Two. Definitely like it better than Shrek the Third. And I don't know about the fourth one. So you're gonna go at the bottom of B, Puss in Boots. You're gonna go there. Now we come to Madagascar 3, and I liked Madagascar 3 better than 2! And it was all thanks to uh, Chantal Dubois. She was the best part about that movie, and if she wasn't there, it would probably end up being about the same or a little under Madagascar 2. I'll put you in high B. All the Madagascars I feel roughly the same about, so there we go. They're, they're all right here in B. <laughs> okay, Rise of the Guardians. This has become very much a cult classic. People are so upset that it bombed at the box office and people are saying it deserves so much more than it got. This is one I picked up relatively recently too because I hadn't watched it since it came out and I thought it was pretty good, you know. Yeah, I do think it gets more, it should get more credit than it gets right now, but not an incredible amount more. So I, I like you more than the Aardman films, but not as much as the Madagascar series. So you're going to go there. And so now we come to The Croods. I feel like I'm vastly alone in this, but I really liked The Croods. I thought The Croods were, was, was very fun. But the more I watch it, I think the reason why I liked it as much as I did was more because of the world that they built as opposed to the actual character in the story. The characters in the stories, they were fine. I didn't dislike them, but it was this world that was created with these hybrid animals and I just thought it was just so fun and imaginative and this is the kind of stuff I would have dreamed up as a kid so I just loved that and uh, yeah because of that it earned some massive points for me enough that I would put it it's either low A or high B I can't decide where I want to put it I think I'm gonna put it low A actually no as I look at that I don't like that no I want it there I want it there because I think it's pretty good but not really good so you're gonna go down. Turbo, yeah, I'm not gonna talk about this one for very long. Turbo goes down here. Turbo is a movie that is there. Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Um, these were characters that I knew of from Rocky and Bullwinkle as a kid, but they were also my least favorite part of Rocky and Bullwinkle. I always dreaded seeing these two because I'm like, oh, y'all are boring. I wanna watch Rocky and Bullwinkle, go away. <laughs> Back whenever Cartoon Network showed like, old cartoons and stuff so uh, Mr. Peabody and Sherman I like the animated movie of this better than their original counterparts in Rocky and Bullwinkle I think they definitely got an upgrade but it still wasn't enough for me to really love them they're going into the it was okay category but I did like it more than Over the Hedge or Monsters vs. Aliens and so now How to Train Your Dragon 2 y'all and once again I think DreamWorks really nails it with these sequels y'all 
really nails it with these sequels. I like the second one even more than the first one. It was so good. Oh, I loved it. I loved it so much. The Penguins of Madagascar. I didn't like it as much as any of the other Madagascar films. Actually, I thought about it pretty much the same way I thought about Puss in Boots, but I like Puss in Boots slightly more. All right, so here's where we start getting to an interesting, well, actually, we technically got there with Peabody and Sherman, but we're, now we're getting to a part of DreamWorks history, which we're kind of in now, where I feel like most of their original stuff is definitely aimed at a younger audience than it used to be. Like, it used to be aimed at the older teens. And, you know, Disney was the safe movie, and this one was the one that was, oh, it was on edge of being like PG-13, so it had that it had that cynical edge to it that actually made it really fun. And I feel like they're really losing that, and they're becoming, like, more safe than a Disney feature animated film. Some of these, I'm like, oh, this is, like, not quite preschool level, but you're getting close. And I feel like they started that with Peabody and Sherman, and they've kind of kept that up until mainly now, unless it's a sequel to something else, like How to Train Your Dragon or a Kung Fu Panda or something like that. Those they've kept pretty much the same, but yeah, all their new stuff just feels like it's aimed at a much younger audience, plays it a lot more safe, and I don't like him as much for that. Home, yeah, Home is just gonna go and see. I think it's okay, but it's still kind of cute. I can't be too mad at it. So I like Over the Hedge better, but I like Home better than Monsters vs. Aliens but it's not by a wide margin. Kung Fu Panda 3! Now when this first came out, I didn't like it as much as one or two, but I still thoroughly enjoyed it. But the older I've gotten and the more I've watched it, the more it's my favorite out of the three now. I just love the Kung Fu Panda series. It's just so good. It is so good to me. And I just, I love all three of them so, so much. Dad, come and I love Kung Fu Panda. I wanna go watch them all again. Trolls, Trolls is a movie. <laughs> Trolls is actually pretty cute. I'm, I'm surprised by how much I like Trolls. I like it more than the spin-off movies, but not more than the Aardman films. You're gonna go there. Oh, great. We have the Academy Award nominated Boss Baby. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Uh, whereas I don't think this movie is a train wreck, it's definitely on the weaker side. And I would probably put it in D territory, but it's the better one in D territory. I'm like, I'm just indifferent that this film exists. And now we have Captain Underpants. Captain Underpants kind of caught me by surprise, because like I said, we've been in this phase where all the original series from DreamWorks, I say original because they didn't create Captain Underpants, it's a book, but you know what I mean. Like, all of the not sequels from DreamWorks at this time were definitely aimed at a younger age, and this one is too. Yeah, it's full of nothing but toilet humor, but toilet humor in this, like, it works! It's an integral part of the story, and it, it works here. It's not annoying. It kind of just let me turn my brain off and be a kid again, and I really appreciated it for that. And yeah, I would put it up. I put it above Trolls. Could I put it above Ardman? It's Captain Underpants. Okay, I'm gonna put it above Ardman, not because I think that they're necessarily better, but because I just had more fun watching this. Can I go that high? I really liked Captain Underpants. It was just fun, and it's got that brand of humor. It's just irreverent and fourth wall breaking, and I love that style of humor, like the Lego movie type humor. I love that humor. Okay, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna put you up there. That feels right. How to Train Your Dragon 3. Now I know I've said I loved two better than one and they're both sitting up at the top of S tier as some of the best stuff from DreamWorks period. And whereas I think How to Train Your Dragon 3 is a great movie, do not like it as much as the first two. I'm, I, I think it was a good ending. I'm very pleased with it. I'm not mad about anything about it other than like, wow, they really butchered the writers in this movie. Like Snot Lout, Rough Nut, Tough Nut, they were annoying, and it really hurt my experience a lot with that. So I, it's still gonna go into S. -t actually, no, it's gonna go into A tier. It's gonna go into high A tier, but I, 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 I can't put it in S tier. I know there's a lot of people that that's their favorite one, and I totally get why. There is some great stuff in here. I didn't like the villain as much. I liked Drago a lot more, but yeah, the way they ended this, I thought was perfect, and I'm really glad that they ended it the way it did. Abominable. 
first film that y'all have done with Pearl. Pearl, Pearl's an animation studio out in China, and they, I feel like they're working with just whoever will work with them, because I think this is the only one that they did with DreamWorks, and then they went and did one with Netflix, and I thought it was pretty good. Um, I liked it more than D, so I'll probably put it at, like, bottom of B tier. I liked it enough. I didn't love it. I thought it was cute, but that was about it. Uh, Trolls World Tour! Trolls 2. I actually liked this more than Trolls 1. Not a lot more, but enough. You know, I like the idea of like the different trolls, and I like to have more music than just pop music. And I'm I'm a little butt hurt that classical music trolls they they didn't really get much time to shine. They had like you heard Beethoven's Fifth, and that was about it. That's like the only piece of classical music people know. Dun 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 dun. There's a lot more classical music than that. There's like 200 years of it, and I was happy to have country trolls. I like that. Uh, Crude's a New Age. Now, I put Crude's up really high, and I'm gonna be real here. I did not enjoy the second one as much. Granted, I don't think it's bad, which is weird, because I think a lot of people liked the second one more than the first one, but I don't. I think one of the biggest reasons I loved the first one so much is that you saw this whole world that was brand new, and this is a world we've technically now seen before, and we really just see one farm, like the whole movie, aside from a little bit at the beginning, and then the punch monkeys. And the punch monkeys were my least favorite part of the first one. So I'm just like, oh, great. We have a whole thing of this. Can we see, like, new animals? We saw, like, two new ones. That was disappointing. And the stuff with the characters was fine. I liked what they were doing more in the first one. I felt like the comedy was stronger there. Yeah, the character development as a whole was better in the sequel. But I just thought the first one was more fun. Um, I'd, I'd probably put it in high C, though. No, I liked it better than that. I fought seeing this movie. Because y'all see how high I put Spirit. I love Spirit. But then they went and made Spirit into this, like, show on Netflix. And, oh, we're going to ride Spirit now. And he's one of the horses. And, like, the whole point of the first movie is that he can't be tamed. And he doesn't want to be tamed. And he wants to be a wild horse. And let him. And it's like a symbol of American freedom. And the symbol of, like, just nature in general. And it was so good. And this one comes in, it's like, oh, hey, we're going to have a little girl ride you all the time now. <laughs> the show made me so mad just on principle. I'm just like, no, he doesn't live in a corral. He doesn't do all this. So I, like, have never watched the show. And when the movie came out, I'm just like, no, nope, I refuse to watch this. It looks stupid. And I love Spirit. And this just feels like it walks all over Spirit. And I watched it. And I can't say that I hate it. I can't say that I love it or think that it's a great movie. But I will say this, it weirdly respects the original spirit far more than I anticipated it doing it. And, you know, it's not bad. I wanted to hate this, I really did. The time I'm watching this, I'm like, no, I believe that this is spirit. Like, y'all are actually treating his character pretty well. He didn't do anything in this that he wouldn't have done in the first movie. It's just in the first movie, he did it better. It's better to think of this as a reimagining of the same character as opposed to a direct sequel. And some people have, like, tried to tell me that it's, it's like, Spirit's son because he has, like, a white strip down his nose and the original Spirit doesn't, but everything else about him is, like, identical. So I'm like, is this really his son or is this supposed to be Spirit? And they just wanted to add some white on his face. I don't know. Because you're not as good as the original Spirit. The hand-drawn animation was better. The music from Hans Zimmer was better. I missed all of that stuff. But... You know, if you had to do a remake or reboot of it, it could be worse. I probably liked you more than Home, not more than Over the Hedge. I was expecting that to be at the bottom of the list when I first started, but no, it's uh, it's not as bad as I was thinking it was going to be. So Spirit Untamed, it's not horrible. If you have little girls, it's fine, and they'll probably enjoy it. And if you're a massive Spirit fan, yeah, you're not going to like it nearly as much, but probably won't despise it. You only got two movies left, woohoo! Now we have Boss Baby 2. And weirdly enough, I liked it more than the first one. Not dramatically more, mind you. It's not going very high. Actually, yeah, I've put it right above the other one. And now we come to the last one. This is one of probably a lot of y'all have no idea about. But this was, I looked on the list and this is one of their movies. It was a, it's a Netflix movie that just came out a couple months ago and it is Troll Hunters Rise of the Titans. Um, if y'all have no idea what Troll Hunters is, let me, let me explain to you. There is actually a full on universe of stuff going on within the Troll Hunters world. There are three shows on Netflix, Troll Hunters, Three Below, and Wizards, 
which you have to watch in that order, by the way, for the story to make sense. There is this giant overarching story between these three series that uh, they basically made their own cinematic universe for Troll Hunters, um, which is their own original thing. So it's like the cinematic universe of Netflix shows that are all like tied together. And I've actually been following the show since it came out. Loved Troll Hunters. Three Below was okay. It was fine. And Wizards I liked more than Three Below, but... Yeah, no, I definitely like Troll Hunters better. And this was the movie that was supposed to wrap up all three story, all three shows, and that this would be the end of the Troll Hunters series and everything. Now, granted, if you're looking at this going, oh, I want to watch this, you really need to watch this series first. Otherwise, you're going to be lost like you start the movie right where the end of Wizards left off. Man, this was a disappointment. Whoo! I was, I was so disappointed in this. The whole movie has huge stakes, like the end of the world type stakes. And this should feel like it's a high stakes movie the whole time, but it never gets there. I never feel that threatened by the threats. I don't know why it is, because they're there the whole movie. And it's like, the whole thing, the stakes are huge, but they don't feel huge. They feel very small. Maybe it's because they didn't have an insane amount of episodes to do it. They only had one movie to do it, but they've been building up the characters who were our enemies in here for a good portion of that. So it should feel stronger than it is. And the way they ended it, the ending, oh, it was bad. It just made me mad. I can't put it in F because the good stuff in it was fun but but i could put it probably at the top of d just because of how much i like the show i can't put it any further down than that but i was disappointed with it but even then i'm disappointed with troll hunters troll hunters i loved so if i'm disappointed with troll hunters it's still not the worst thing in the world but yeah no i really wish they didn't end it this way i really wish they found another way to end it because this was not very good despite that go watch the series i do enjoy the series so that's it that's my list I was expecting to have more in the bad section, weirdly enough. There were quite a few surprises for me going through this list, and I'm really glad I did it. Yeah, I'm really glad I rewatched a lot of these, especially Sinbad and Eldorado. I'm so glad I did that. Overall, DreamWorks has had a weird history, and it's gone through a lot of ups and downs, and it's been strange, but when DreamWorks puts out a good movie, they put out a good movie. I think it's exciting when, you know, another studio besides Disney or Pixar can release something great. And DreamWorks for a while was one of the biggest contenders. Lately, they've been falling down on that in my opinion, but, you know, who knows? Maybe they'll come back. And that's one of the fun things about DreamWorks is despite how many flops that they've made and despite how many they've made that were just kind of eh or subpar, there's a lot that really shine and they're so unique and so different because they have the freedom to do that. And that's kind of how the studio works. I'm grateful to have DreamWorks around. And granted, I miss a lot more of the risk taking that they used to do, but also that almost bankrupted them. Because for every good Kung Fu Panda or How to Train Your Dragon they got, there was also a Shark Tale or a Bee Movie or a Turbo. Ended up not being a winning formula. So I get why they're veering away from it now, but I do miss those days and... It doesn't hurt to hope that maybe we can have something like that again. If not from DreamWorks, maybe another studio. Sony, Sony, weirdly enough, seems to be taking up that mantle, but we'll see. We'll see. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Bye!